Now, where are you from? Me? I'm from Baltimore City. It's in my name. Be more low key. It's in your voice, too. Yeah, that yeah, accent. A lot of people say I got an accent. I don't oh, think I, I got an it. accent. Oh, I can hear it. I think I talk regular. <laughs> but I'm representing the 410 from Baltimore City, man. What was it like for you growing up in Baltimore? Paint the picture for us. Um, what it was like growing up in Baltimore, it was definitely, I say, a little rough because um, not too, you have, like, really no stars that make it out of Baltimore. You have no big names like, oh, yo, man, he went he went big. He went, like, like a legend. And, that's, and I want to be that first person to actually be a legend out of my city. There's been people that have made a little buzz and noise from our city, but nobody has been big. You know, I just want, I want to be that first big artist. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, like, people sleep on Baltimore. They don't, they don't think that we are a talented city. They feel as though because everything that they seen, like the wire and, you know, the riots with the whole Freddie Gray situation, that we just a bad city. And that's one thing that I wanted to show. Like, we, we positive. We have great things about our city. Y'all just, a lot of people don't like to take the time out to look at it or come to Baltimore to see them for themselves instead of going off of what they hear. So, you know, um, I just, that's, that's one thing. It was tough growing up there, but I'm representing my city right now. And there's a couple other people representing it right now too. So we putting on for our city. You said it was rough. What was one of your roughest moments growing up? Um, my childhood with my birth injury, I was bullied a lot, you know, with the um, brachial plexus injury. A lot of people ask that question, even though it was highlighted on the show. Some people still be asking, um, "What's wrong with your arm?" It's a brach It's called brachial plexus. Whereas though I don't have the supination in my right arm as I do on my left, you know I can't extend it fully. Um, so, um, a lot of people would call me different names and stuff. That's one thing that influenced me to do rap. You know, I went I went home and wrote it down on a piece of paper. I don't know how I felt, but I made it rhyme. And you know what I'm saying? It came out right. I actually got a whole song talking about the things that I've been through. Um, I was burnt by on when I was younger, not intentionally by nobody, just so y'all don't think that. That was by myself. I was hard headed. So <laughs> um but I was actually ran over by a car as well, um, and was put in a cast um from my hip below, broke every bone. Basically had to learn how to walk again. So it was it was tough for me growing up. But at the end of the day, what God has for you is what he has for you. And he had a big plan, a major plan for me. That's why I'm here today. So You said the arm injury was a birth? I mean, the, not injury, but the yes. arm situation was a birth? Uh... Yeah, I wasn't born with it. It was the way that I was pulled out, um, which, oh. which um, struck my nerves. Whereas though, um, they had to pull nerves out of my leg and put them in my neck in order for me to be able to move my arm. Now, I didn't notice when you uh, came to the office today any arm injury, uh, or not, I don't keep saying injury, but any arm defect. So when do people actually notice it, or is it something you mention to them? Because um, it looks pretty normal to me. I don't see yeah, the uh, like sometimes, Yeah, sometimes you can see it on pictures or in videos and stuff like that, um, and people ask, because I don't hide it. I embrace it, and that's one thing JD always said, don't hide it. That's you. Be yourself. Like when we did the photo shoot. Um, he told me put it in my right pocket. That's what I did with the salute photo shot. So you like you would know like you wouldn't know that I had a birth injury, but at the same time you can't say oh I had it behind my back. It was hidden. So that's what I'm saying. Like I don't hide it. I want people to know this is me. If you don't accept me for it, you know like I just feel as though if people don't accept you for who you are, then they're not for you. But you know a lot of people ask and want to know about it. So I just put it out there and let them know. So you just can't fully extend it, is that it? Yeah. See, like, where's though with my left, I oh, can okay, I see put it. it out, but I can't do that with my right. And I can go like this with my left, I can't do that with my right. Oh. But I can still, like, move it and different things like that. You know, I don't let it hold me back at all. I see. Is there anything you can't physically do because of the uh, situation? No, it's, I mean, it's nothing that I, it's nothing that I can't do. Um, I played sports. I played football. Started running back. <laughs> oh wow! And middle linebacker. Um, I played basketball. I played baseball, soccer, everything. You know, I just I don't let it hold me back at all. You know, um, and I influenced a lot of people with this injury because um, my grandmother, she's actually like in a nursing home, and one of her friend's daughter, 
was, had the same injury as me. She was 27. And she didn't come out. The, she hated coming out the house, never really came out the house. She sent people to the market for her just so people wouldn't see her arm. But when she seen me doing what I did and representing myself and like with my arm, that gave her like ignition. Like I can I can go out here and do the same thing as him. I can be myself. So like that kind of changed her life. Now she goes out parties and just have fun with her friends and family now, you know, and just don't care what people say about her arm because she feels as though that I that I did it, she can do it too. Also I just ran across um another man, I say about a week or two ago. And he said he did not know nothing about his injury. He has the same injury as me. He watched the show and seen my arm and was like, hey. Well, he, was, he said he was actually born in Nigeria. So um, the doctors over there didn't know what the injury was. So when he came over to the U.S. and watched the show, he was like, he has the same injury as me. So he took, he took the show to the doctors and ask them, um, do you know what this injury is? And do you know if I had the same thing? And they said, we had the same injury. It's called brachial plexus. So that's when he found out that he had the same injury as me. And he's a grown man. He just found out the injury that he had from watching a rap game. So I inspired him too as well. You know, like he said, like seeing you on that show and just being, being you, you know, rapping, showing off to the world. He said it was, it was, it was crazy. And you helped me figure out what my birth injury was. And he just said, I want to say thank you. And, like, that touched me and my family. Like, wow. Like, I would never thought I would have heard somebody say that. Now, obviously, you have long sleeves on. But does it look any different than your other arm if the sleeves were off? Like, is it a noticeable thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's kind of, like, skinnier, I would oh, say. Oh, okay. And, um, and, like, it's, it's, it's shorter. You can definitely see it. Oh, okay. though, like, it doesn't go flat like this but you feel me um i embrace that and pe that's one thing people love about me do you does that stop you from wearing short sleeve shirts or not at all i wear jerseys i wear no shirt y'all saw you saw on the rap game finale i took off i took off my jacket i had the tank top on so like it doesn't hold me back at all i see now what's your advice to a young person and and, and let me ask you this how did you deal with the bullying how did you deal with it your family. My family helped me um, a lot getting through the bullying. You know, they talked to me, said brush it off. It took me a little while to actually brush it off. But as I got older, I started to brush it off, you know, and and tried to capitalize off of it. And that's what I did. Um, a lot of people would say I couldn't play sports, but when I did play sports, I was good at it. So I was hated on at that. You know, like with music, I feel as though there's no specific look you have to have or sound or anything, you, it's just open. So music does not have no limits to it at all. That's, that's why I think I took the um, path that I took with music because at the end of the day, you can still do music no matter how you look, no matter how you sound, how tall or short you are, it doesn't matter. Now, what do you say to, uh, what's some words of advice to somebody that has maybe not your birth situation, defect or injury or whatever you want to call it, health issue, whatever, um, but, you know, might have something else with their body that's some sort of defect or injury or whatever. Um, maybe not their arm, but, you know, going through bullying and that sort of thing or just living life with it. Uh, what What's some words of advice you would say to that person? Um, some words of advice that I would give y'all is just be yourself. Um, embrace it. Don't hide it. You know, God made you that way for a reason. So, Embrace it, you know, like he, God has a plan for everybody. So if he made you that way, just embrace it and be yourself. Stand up for yourself. If you have somebody bullying you, make sure you talk to somebody. Talk, talk to your family members. Don't, don't hide it. Because when you hide things, it can lead to something that you don't want it to lead to. So always be open to talk with your family or close friends that you can trust. You know, always talk to God, too. No now, matter whatever um, religion that you worship, talk to your God. Now, how does school work for you? School with me, I do homeschooling um, online because of my schedule. I have to travel a lot, so I can't really be in public schooling or with, like an actual school because I would take too much time out of school. 
Um, and that, it kind of it started to happen before everything popped off because I had a lot of shows coming up. I was doing school tours. Whereas though, like the principal, she knew I rapped and she understood, but I was kind of like I was I was coming off on a lot of days. Whereas though, I would just go back and um, after school and just talk to my teachers and get the work done after school. But instead of doing that, why not just do online? So that's the route that we took. So you were doing homeschooling when the show started and all that happening, or were you doing homeschooling maybe before that the show kicked off? And stuff? No, I was actually in public schooling, um, in an actual school before the show started. And then once I got the car and everything, we got the homeschooling situated. So what grade are you in now? I'm in the 11th. So I'm almost done. So your 11th grade was when you started homeschooling? No, I started in 10th. Oh, okay. Got you. Now, is the homeschooling easy or harder than going to public school? Um, I've never done it personally, yeah, so I'm just it's curious. Like, it's like 50-50. It's kind of easier because you get to work ahead and do how much you want. Um, and then at the same time, it's kind of hard because it's, it's, it's like a little bit self-teaching. You don't have a teacher to tell you every step of the way, but um, you do have an online teacher that you can talk to, and she do live classes or he does live classes and explains everything and break things down to you. Um, but at a certain extent, it can get hard. But it's as, it's, it's as hard as you make it. You know, if, if you make it hard, then it will be hard. You just got to stay on top of it. Now, obviously, in high school, some of the big things that especially young guys look forward to is maybe homecoming, maybe right. prom, stuff like that. How does that work for you? Um, I'm still very in touch with my high school that I was in before everything. You know, um, I still go back to like the basketball games and I went to the homecoming and performed. Um, and I just went back recently and was talking to them and I'm going to go to prom, you know. Um, so like everything is still the same. It's just I'm homeschooled. I'm just going to attend those type of activities at my old high school. And then what about driving? How are you doing with that? Well, I haven't started driving yet because um, I didn't have the time. As soon as I was about to start. Then all of this came about, you know, I was actually about to start around my birthday time. And, like, that was, like, the biggest birthday present that I got, getting a call from the rap game producers. <laughs> so that was big. But I think probably in, like, January, I'm, I'm going to go to driving school so I can start whipping myself. <laughs> Will the, the arm situation be an issue when it comes to driving? Or? Not at all. Now, what about, like girlfriends, dating, stuff like that. How does that work for you? Are you into that or? I just have friends, you know what I'm saying? Like not, nothing else. Um, I'm focused on my career and focused on me. I just got friends. Now, we spoke about a bunch of different subjects uh, about your upbringing, but generally speaking, overall, what's your message to the youth? My message to the youth is stay in school because you can't get nowhere without it. So definitely finish school before anything. And you know, I said it before, and I'm just gonna say it again. Be yourself, that's one of the main keys that's gonna get you somewhere in life, being yourself, because people don't like duplicates. So, you know what I'm saying? Try to think of something different that's gonna make you stand out. Be yourself and just always be open to new things and be open to learning. That's one thing that my team and my mom taught me, always be open to learning new things because that's how you can progress in life and get to a higher status.